Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and it seems like all of the major announcements are coming this week where I'm barely hanging on by a string, but uh, I'm going to try and get through this one as quick as possible, and it is another major announcement, so I have to do a video about this one, and that is Godot 3.2 is finally here, and this one has been in development for close to a year, it was intended to be a fairly small release at first, and then it kind of ballooned over time, so if you head on over to the GodotEngine.org website, you will notice the download is now available, all the export templates, everything else is available. So if you've been waiting for Godot 3.2, you wait no longer. It is now here. So let's see what is in Godot 3.2. First off, we've got this blog post. I'm going to skim through a bit of it, but uh, this is the announcement of what is going on. Uh, a big thing that's happened with Godot 3.2 is the lead developer moved on to developing the 4.0 branch as part of this process. Um, so he's working on the Vulkan renderer and Godot 4.0, uh, but a lot of other people stepped up and really contributed towards uh, the 3.2 release. It was 10 months of work, 450 contributors, and 300 of them were new, which is pretty awesome, uh, which kind of shows that Godot is in fact growing. Uh, so as I mentioned, it is available for download right now. A bit of a story about how it became what it is. Um, Almost every area of the engine has uh, seen some degree of enhancement, and we encourage users to move their active projects to 3.2 if they can. They did their best to preserve uh, compatibility between 3.1 and 3.2 projects, but a low amount of compatibility breaking changes have been done and might require light porting work for a project. Uh, see the change section in the change log for details, but it is recommended if you can do it, move to 3.2. Um, We've got a bunch of improvements going on across the board, and then of course we've got the 4.0 branch happening as well. We've got a couple of other things still needing to happen, uh, including uh, the AOT and C Sharp support for iOS, uh, but that's kind of a bit of a spoiler about what's in this release. So let's break it down on a feature-by-feature -feature basis of what the major new features are in Godot 3.2. The first one we got is documentation, more content and a better theme. So the documentation got kind of love across the board, um, it's got a lot more, uh, the, the translations have kind of went across. Uh, class references went from 73% complete to 90% complete. Uh, a new theme online, light and dark auto detected from system settings. Um, and this is actually one of those areas where it's really nice to see it happen because a lot of open source projects really fail on their documentation. So an emphasis on the documentation stuff is definitely a nice uh, development here. So documentation definitely improved in this particular release, both online and on local. Um, Mono. So C sharp support slash mono support is one of those things that kind of came in 3.0, but there were some big missing areas. There was no Android support and no WebAssembly support. So if you wanted to use mono projects, you couldn't create HTML5 targets and you couldn't use it for Android. Now you can. Both of those have been implemented in mono now, so you can create for Android and you can create for WebAssembly. As of right now, um, so there's initial support for AOT or ahead of time. A compilation was also merged, but it is not enabled yet. You can know 3.2. AOT, it means basically instead of being jitted or runtimed, it's going to be compiled ahead of time. It creates, it makes it so you can run faster. But more importantly, AOT is required if you want to run on um, iOS because iOS randomly said screw you to any um, scripting language running on their platform. Basically, when they were trying to kill off Flash, uh, they made a policy that you couldn't have any uh, scripting languages or virtual machines running on their platform, which is kind of stupid, but that's kind of an issue. But what this leads to ultimately is in Godot 3.2, the one thing missing for C-sharp developers is iOS support. Everything else is there. It is a much more mature platform option at this point in time. So if you want to use C-sharp, uh, you definitely can at this point in time. You just can't target iOS yet. Now, um, what they said earlier in this development is that as part of the maintenance release, so 3.2.x releases, they'll hopefully will add AOT and iOS support. So we probably won't have to wait till 4.0 for those things to happen, which is nice. Next up, we have AR, VR, Oculus Quest, and AR Kit support. So Bastian Olage has been working on this stuff. The nice thing is he's getting a lot of support out there from uh, the, the headset manufacturers now. So he's actually getting devices and hardware support and so on. Uh, a lot of improvements across the board here. So um, the augmented reality support and the VR support in Godot has improved. The amount of devices have improved and so on. So it's nice to see that uh, continuing to happen. Um, so there is a burgeoning community of Quest VR developers already publishing interesting Godot-based prototypes and the stable 3.2 release should boost it. 
Uh, stay tuned as Bastion will soon upload pre-compiled VR plugin for all supported headsets to our asset library and likely post an update on his blog when he does. Uh, definitely an interesting project and uh, cool to see VR and AR support being added to the Godot engine. Uh, then we got the visual shaders overhaul. This actually makes visual shaders so much nicer to work with. It's a bunch of just usability feature tweaks to uh, the visual shader interface. Um, so you can see some of them in action here. Uh, yeah. It made it so that you can um, drop in textures directly and hook them in. Uh, the, the workflow and usability is a lot nicer. It's even got things like uh, copy and paste support and, and so on. So working with the visual shader programming language is actually quite a bit nicer now. And I, I couldn't go back to the old one with the way the new one works now. The old one just seems so clunky with all these refinements that have happened in visual shader support. Next up, we have... Graphics rendering and improvement. So while the Vulkan 4.0 is in, um, sorry, Vulkan is in Godot 4.0, 3.2 got some improvements, including uh, refinements to the GL ES2 and ES3 rendering backends, including changes to make the PBR workflow better match content creation tools. So what you'll find is it should be easier in Godot 3.2 to get your content to look like it looks in Eevee. When you're working in a, a PBR workflow on your uh, Blender or whatever tool, um, it it should hopefully look the same once it's brought into uh, the Godot engine because they, they line up closer in how they work. Um, also, GLES3 features were ported to GLES2, including support for MSAA and various post-processing effects such as glow, depths of field blur, and BCS. Um, yeah, so that's definitely some nice improvements. Next up, we have 3D Asset Pipeline. This is actually probably the most substantial change in this release and probably the biggest pain point for dealing with Godot right now is getting your content in. And that's not unique to Godot. That's the biggest pain point in every single content creation platform. But a lot of the game engines will work with uh, commercial releases. They'll just use the FBX libraries, binaries, and, and then they work perfectly because they're using the closed source binaries. That's not an option in the Godot world. Um, so this is an area where Godot struggles a bit more than other game engines. And so we've got a couple of really cool major releases in part of 3.2. That is GL 2.0, fully functioning import pipeline, and FBX support. Uh, so we do finally have FBX support. I believe this is being done via the ASS imp library, um, which kind of allows you to actually support a ton of different formats, but I think they just went with FBX in this case. Um, it's basic, currently in a preview state. Uh, FBX files exported from Blender with animations are partially supported. They don't support Maya or 3ds Max FBX files. In the future, we will improve. So FBX is very, very, very early at this point in time. Uh, but GLTF2 is probably your go-to now at this point in time. So... Um, it's definitely over the Collada format, you're gonna probably find GLTF2 just works better and aligns better with the project on the whole. So it's nice to see this and hopefully the support makes it so much easier to bring your content in at this point in time. And then we've got WebRTC and WebSocket support. Uh, this is from developed from a reward or you know money uh, from Mozilla. Uh, they've been able to improve support for WebRTC support. Um, so WebRTC is a uh, RTC being real-time communications. It's a way of networking inside of the web browser. Um, so they've now got that support built into the Godot game engine. Very cool going on there. Next up, we have the Android build and plugin system. Uh, this was the last thing Juan did before he moved on to the Godot 4.0 development branch. Uh, this is for a lot of areas where if you wanted to add features or functionality to your Godot Android app, you had to build your own APK from sources to make it really kind of painful. Uh, now they've got a separate export system for doing a custom Android build. So you can do things like add uh, third-party social features, monetization platforms, etc. cetera, uh, to this without having to build everything by scratch. New plugin system is included to make better use of custom work build workflow, allowing users to configure the custom build via plugins uh, instead of doing a local modification to the Godot source template. Android port also got a massive refactoring by new contributor Freda, uh, who quickly um, became one of our main Android maintainers. This enabled us to modernize the code and fix some longstanding issues and improve upon the initial work done by Juan. 
Next up, we got some new editor features, kind of across the board stuff. The big one there is the ability to disable features on the fly. Uh, so you can come in here and turn things on and off. So if you're in an educational setting, so you don't want people getting into certain areas or using certain code features or whatever, you can actually turn them on and off on an individual basis. We've also got um, initial integration for VCS support. Um, and, and there is a Git plugin, which can be used to enable basic Git support in the editor. Uh, yeah, it's definitely cool stuff going on there. And then we've got, oops, I think I screwed things up, coding tools. Uh, so one thing we've got going on here is implemented a language server protocol. This is kind of a way for external tools to talk to Godot about GDScript. Uh, this makes it so that you can have um, your editors work better and have better functionality when talking to GD or talking to Godot and talking about GDScript. So far we have Visual Studio Code and Atom plugins out there. Um, so if you're working in either of those platforms, your language support should probably have just gotten better. We've also got a new mini map view, uh, new bookmarks in scripts, and while working on the LSP features, took the time to improve code completion, uh, and notably showing different icons based on the type of code completion options, class, methods, properties, constants, etc. And finally, there were many improvements to the visual script improvements from uh, G G GSOC or uh, Google Summer of Code project. Next up, we've got 2D, uh, we got in the 2D world, we have Pseudo 3D, uh, Texture Atlases, and A Star 2D were added. Pseudo 3D uh, is an easy way to add depth to 2D games by using several canvas layers, allowing them to um, follow the main viewport and scale automatically to fake perspective. Um, Support for texture atlases comes also comes back to Godot with 3.2 with an easy way to generate deterministic atlases directly from the editor. We're never really sure why texture atlases went away, to be honest. But and um, with various performance optimizations for Godot's A star implementation, A star 2D variant was implemented to simplify its use for 2D pathfinding. A star is probably the most common uh, 2D pathfinding algorithm out there. And we've got some GUI improvements, anchor margins, workflow, uh, rich, um, rich text label effects, and so on. And then we have the auto generators and spectrum analyzers. Uh, audio stream generators allow you to easily generate sound waves by pushing individual frames uh, or a buffer and a spectrum analyzer. This allows you to actually create waveforms directly um, in Godot. Uh, there's an audio stream class, I forget the exact name of it, but you can basically dump out raw data. So it allows you to, to really create more programmatic audio going forward. And that's it. That is the Godot 3.2 feature. So once again, this is live. This is no longer a beta or a release candidate or anything else. You head on over to Godot and you click the download link, the version you download now. This will be Godot 3.2 at this point on. So uh, it took 10 months to get here, but it is definitely a major release. Uh, let me know what you think of it all in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.